What's up everyone? Thanks for joining me this week for T-SQL Tuesday number 104. If you're unfamiliar with T-SQL Tuesday, it's a monthly writing prompt that members of the SQL Server community all talk about the same topic. And this month's topic is hosted by yours truly and I am asking for everyone to kind of share their favorite scripts that they wouldn't be able to live without. So the code I want to share with you today is a template for creating table-driven dynamic queries. This is something I use regularly because I hate maintaining my code, like making little changes as, you know, things need to be added or changed over time. And using this type of template allows my code to kind of stay flexible and dynamic, reducing the amount of maintenance I have to do. Let's take a look at some of the code here today. And in this example, uh, let's pretend that I wanted to query this database permissions table, right? Uh, standard table in the model database, uh, you know, nothing too special here. But if I wrote my query by actually listing out my field names like this, it would be a huge issue if, you know, a new version of SQL Server adds a column um, or I want to you know, add predicates to this with variable conditions in the future. This query right here isn't very flexible. Fortunately for us, SQL Server has internal tables that keep information about what columns and data types are in each table. And so if we actually jump over to this finished query here, um, you know, here are those views. We're using all views, schemas, and columns. And so if I just say temporarily, this is our finished template that I'll show you here in a second. But if we just look at these, right, you're probably familiar with these. These are all the in internal views where SQL Server lists the names of views and tables. And then, you know, further on here, we have the schemas, the, the names of the columns that are in each, their data types, so on and so forth. So what this dynamic template does is it queries these views uh, to build dynamic query strings so that my queries uh, remain flexible in the future. The, the queries are built off this metadata that SQL Server stores internally. So if you're unfamiliar with dynamic SQL, what we're basically doing up here is declaring a few variables um, that are going to contain the query text that we're programmatically building. Below that is the syntax for generating uh, our concatenated strings of column names together uh, into our variables that we declared above, right? So we have this columns variable. We're going to be coalescing, concatenating, right? All of the name fields coming from our sys dot all columns view down here. And what that's going to do is it's going to generate our select list of columns that we want to query. It's going to get it at runtime. So if anything changes, if there's new columns in a new version, our query is going to pick those changes up. And down here, we're doing something similar for the object name, right? In case we're querying a view or a table, this is kind of just a basic generic object name that we're going to put into the from statement. Um, so if we run this query and, and we filter it on our one view of interest, our database permissions view, um, what we'll see is, let me actually add in what columns looks like here, that we get our comma delimited list of all of the column names in our database permissions view. And this is generated based off of the, the data that's in those sys.allviews tables. So if we then instead of selecting this column here, if we concatenate it into a select and a from statement and we execute our full query, you know, we'll get the same exact results that we would with this initial query that I showed you. There's, there's nothing different in the results. Um, and this is a little bit more work to write, obviously, but this query allows us a lot of flexibility going forward. Right, and you're not limited to building these kinds of dynamic queries only based on these internal SQL server views that contain column and table names. I actually don't even do that very often. I'm, I'm building these types of dynamic queries off of my own tables um, so that if I want a query to be modified in the future, I just add a new row to a table and I know my dynamic query is automatically going to pick up that change, automatically building the query, reducing the amount of maintenance I need to do. So there are downsides to writing queries this way. Obviously, it's more upfront work to make them dynamic. Uh, you do have to consider SQL injection as a, as a possibility, as a risk, because you are concatenating variables of data together. Um, your performance of these queries may not always be optimal depending on how you're executing the queries. If query plans are getting cached, if they're getting you know, reused with bad query plans because variables are in your queries, right? There's a lot of performance problems that could happen, um, but it's a trade-off, right? I mean, that's something you need to consider 
with do you want the flexibility of being able to not have to maintain these queries uh, where they just kind of build and maintain themselves or do you want the absolute best performance and it's a something to consider pro on a project by project basis you gotta do what's right for you so that's it like i said i use this pattern all the time uh, I would hate having to live without being able to build dynamic queries this way. It would, my amount of work that I'd have to do would you know, increase tenfold because I wouldn't be able to automate some of those queries. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I plan to actually do a whole series on this maybe in August uh, with a little bit more in detail about how I, how I execute these dynamic queries as part of my ETL processes. So we'll see how that goes. Next week, I'm going to do a roundup of all of the T-SQL posts, so be sure to tune in for that to see all of the other scripts that people in the community have shared. And I guess I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.